Hi there everyone, my name is Dominic and welcome back to Little Nightmares 2 and welcome back to the final chapter of Little Nightmares 2. So, this is going to be the last Little Nightmares we have for uh, for a while until the third game comes out, but uh, uh, let's go in here. We defeated the Thin Man, which was good, but now we're into this little nightmare house. I, I was- I- excuse me! Fucking rude! Don't shut the door on me. I'm- I'm trusting you. Don't- don't I'm gonna- I'm coming, I'm coming, excuse me. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot this is like, the doors are like little, um, like little portals between one another, which is kind of a fun little, a fun wrinkle to add into the game this late. There we go. And... I forget, what's the... Okay. Oh, that's right, because... I remember the first time I played this, I got a little bit confused on it, but you just have to go where the uh, where the music's leading you. Oh, see, like now, yeah, now it's coming through this side. I like the detail of the shadow coming through the other door to just just to sell the effect of it coming through. All right, and then one more this way. Yes. Nice, nice, there we go. It'd be so cool, because that main theme is like that little twinkling children's theme that, that is like the main theme for Little Nightmares. That'd be so cool as like a music box. Imagine if you had that, but it was a Little Nightmares music box. That feels like an Etsy gift that would be so damn cool if someone made it. Um, it's the same thing, right? I gotta... Yeah, I gotta find the door with the right music. Yes. Yes? Ah ha ha! Can't fool me. Because I've played this game before. And if it did fool me, that would be very, very stupid of me. <laughs> there we go. Uh, no, not that one. There it is. God, this section's so pretty, too. This whole game is gorgeous and even prettier than the first game. Oh. Hold on. Oh, it must be this door. Hold on. Whoosh! Is that not it? Wait, how do we get in there? Okay, hold on. Because... I don't want to screw up the pattern. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I was having snacks right before I started recording. They got caught in my throat. <laughs> All right. Yeah, push, right? I don't want to screw it up the, like, the other time. Okay, hold on. Can I jump up to the handle to unlock it? Or maybe I have to go up here. Okay, hold up. That is the doorway, right? Like, that's where we're supposed to be going. Um, okay. And that doesn't go up further than that, okay. There's nothing above us to worry about really, right? No. I love all the, um, like the, it's very like a dolly painting with the, uh, like the cupboard up there, like bending in half. Like, everything's kind of distorted and melting. Like, this world's collapsing in on itself as, as we witness. So, um, it's not this way, otherwise it's gonna break it. Okay, hold on. See, why is it... Hold on. I had that problem last time where... I was trying to open the door and for whatever reason the push wasn't working, so... Can we go through the connected door? Is that the thing? Because this will open. Oh, so now... Okay, okay, that's the thing. You just gotta open the doors because you can open them from the other side. And then go through. That's right. That makes sense. I just don't want to screw it up and reset the whole puzzle or anything. Aha! There we go. It's funny. This feels like a game that, like... It feels like the kind of concept that would be like a Tim Burton short film back in his heyday. Which was a while ago. No disrespect to Tim Burton. But I feel like that level of Tim Burton inventiveness has not been on the table for a minute. <laughs> there we go. 
Except maybe like Frank and Weenie, because that feels like, because that's going back to his roots. I feel like that maybe is the last thing that really kind of connected, you know? Wait, is it none of these? Hold on. All right, here, don't, don't fall off the thing. That'd be the dumbest way to die. Or is it this door back here? Oh, there's more doors. Oh, good heavens. There we go. I do like, too, them going to this puzzle, th like, solving component to the game, because that's obviously part of both games. But, um, this one has less of, like, you've been through so many enemies and you've defeated the Thin Man, so I think it would feel a little weird if they were throwing more enemies at you because we're so clearly powerful at this point and in command of things. So I think it's more fun having us just trying to go through this kind of mind fuck of a place. Oh, it's so cool. Sweet. All right. Is that where I'm hearing the sound coming from? Maybe? Yes? Yeah, there we go. That's right, because we're trying to get into here. Oh, that's right. Oh, hey, friend. What long fingers you have. But six on the plus side, you're... You know, your career as a, uh, as a brilliant piano player, concerto pianist, is really gonna work for you now. Can I, can I help you? Can, can I hold your hand? Hey, bud. Poor thing. Can I give you something else to make you happy? Like, whoa. Oh, that's where I gotta talk. All right. Hold on, does everything fly if I bonk into it? Oh, that's cool. That's a cool little zero G effect. Yeah. Hi, hi. All right. Come on. Do I need to keep calling you? Okay, now can I share this with you? Is it, are we okay? It's okay. Do I need to try to lead six out, I'm assuming? Come on. Or am I just having you move out of the way? Let's see, hold on, is there anything else? Oh, because the music box is like tormenting her, right? Here, I save you. It's for your own good. There we go. It's good. The little, the little circular music box is bad for your eyes. There we go. Oh shit, we gotta get out of here. Ruh row. Yeah, I think we gotta go. Oh, I'm sorry. It was bad for you. Oh shit. Oh God, I stayed there because that's our like our friends, right? I didn't think we had to run right away, but apparently we do. No time to waste. Six is a little grumpy, little grumpy. Okay. Oh God. Uh, God, six is so scary like this. Oh shit. <laughs> Well, we didn't get caught, at least. Oh, I have to start back here. I mean, that makes sense. All right. All right, all right. There we go, there we go. This way, come on, come on. Excuse me, excuse me. We'll talk more later, all right? Six, you need a moment, I understand. I will text you when you're feeling better. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Do I need to hide? I think I need to hide. Oh, buddy. I think we just need to talk this out, all right? No, don't, don't look under here. There we go, there we go. Yeah, there, there you go, right, right through there, buddy. <sighs> also, these portraits on the walls are terrifying. Like that one over there, like that's like, the face is just like the shape of the frame. Disgusting. All right. An axe. I hope that doesn't have to be used for anything. All right, give me that. G 
give me that. There we go. And a boink. Uh, a boink. And a boink. Nice. Oh, hi. Hey. Okay, so. That door is open. Do I need to. Okay. I think I need to lure six away, so. Yeah, yeah. Come on, this way. Oh, interesting. That doesn't do it. Do I need to hit it first and then lure it away? Okay, hold on. We have the thing. I'm going to get it closer. Come on, follow me. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, not that way, apparently. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Apparently not that. Apparently I need to... Can I... Oh, yeah, I can... That's the thing. I need to call six... Whoa, whoa. Oh, shit. So I'm assuming I need to distract six far enough away from the thing to be able to smack it, because that's like what's like infecting her. Okay. Oh, no. All right, that does, that's not enough. Okay. How do I get over there fast enough? That's the thing. Okay, okay. So I just need to call once. Okay, 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 leave me alone! Leave me alone! There we go, there we go. Buddy, you gotta give it up, all right? I'm sorry. It's not good for you. Trying to take away your little depression box. Aha! Uh -huh. Even in the Shadow Realm, we need an axe. Lovely. Oh, because is this door going to open up magically? Yeah, there we go. Nice, nice. Oh, okay, so we got to do the same deal again. Okay. Right here. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, so... All right, so I need, okay, so I can't hop up here, so I need the ax to be, all right, I think I got it now. Okay, so we gotta go over here. Say, what's up? Come on, get up there. Nice, nice, there we go. There we go. That's better. Okay. So we got to do the same thing again. I do like that because like the whole city is kind of broken now. So it's like everything's going to this fever dream kind of state, which I hope they, they lean more into that in the third one, honestly. But again, who knows? We'll see. Because again, it'll be a different team. So I, we're, we're going to keep an open mind to it. But uh, who knows? Who knows what direction they might take? Back here again. Uh, ooh, tricky. Okay, so 
That's so we can't jump up that. Okay, yeah, because it's interesting, like as a puzzle game, to make it so we can't get up there easily. So, all right. You go over there. Oh shit, oh shit, your hand goes through. Okay, okay, I, I got it now. Um, okay, so what's the best route to distract then? Okay, like, can I jump up this? I can, okay, so I can jump up there and grab the ax. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know you're going through it. My apologies, friend. Okay. Bonk! I think that did it, right? Yes, maybe, hopefully. Come on, Six. Come on. It's for your own good, friend. Oh! <laughs> I don't know what I... <laughs> I think in my brain, I was like, okay. Like, it'll be just like a nice moment between them. She'll let him do it. Uh, no. I'm sorry. Apologies, apologies. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that's all. Oh, sh oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. So we just got to call, like, call out to six and then walk up there within that little window of time. Okay. I do like that this, like, in, because the whole thing is, like, this game's about, like, people's vices it feels like so i like the notion that like this is almost like six dealing with um it feels like at least like dealing with like an addiction like it's this fixation that this is the only thing that keeps her feeling safe even though it's destroying her there we go there we go oh i gotta do it again it's for the best there we go I'm doing this because I love you, Six. Yeah, the like, fleshy walls are so gross. Got tumors growing everywhere. It's not a tumor. Now it's time to go, I think. Come on. Oh, God. Ew. <laughs> come on. Come on. Through the door. There we go, there we go. Oh, shit, shit. Ugh. Ew. I feel like I'm not running fast enough. I feel like I might not make it. Come on, come on. This way, no! And yoink! Okay, come on. Up, up! Don't let the eyeballs get ya. Come on, go, go, go! No. Save me! Wow! Ah, oh, shit. Uh, don't let, don't you let go, Mr. Frodo. Ah, uh, Six, you raggedy bitch. I knew it was coming and it still makes me so mad. Selfish motherfucker. I mean, they don't call it little nightmares for no reason. Little shit. Okay. 
And now we're just down here in the belly of the beast. Ugh. God, the sound design so gross. The just like gurgly, undulating sound. Yeah, can we explore like kind of anywhere? Yeah, we can. There's something over there on that meat pile. Poor thing, he's just waiting there for his friend. Well, not really friends no more. Six is not a friend. such a good moment such a good the visuals are so good it's such a cool outro to the experience so I didn't really want to say anything while it was going because I'm like this is it's better to just enjoy it I think especially if you have played the game before then you know it's coming if you haven't then I think that outro is very impactful the first time but obviously it does raise a lot of questions about you know because it, it goes into being sort of a um Sort of a circular kind of narrative you know the idea that he is the thin man yeah that's the last thing okay but yeah he is the thin man and it's like okay like with any sort of looping kind of story kind of it's like i'm never quite sure if i'm quite satisfied with it or not this is one of the games where i forgive it i'm a little more comfortable with enjoying it and forgiving it because the game's not ultra literal to begin with it's a lot of symbolism and a lot of visual storytelling so I, the bending of the rules a little bit makes sense versus when some stories are very hyper literal and try to do these looping narratives it feels like it makes everything that comes before kind of cheaper and kind of uh have less weight and value but I think this one kind of works the idea that it's like this looping you know in this city where that betrayal led him to being the thin man and being bitter and you know something that like ended up being a danger to everyone in the city and all that so 
Um, it's in it's interesting. It's just a cool ending. It's one of those where I feel like trying to explain it away is not that important, honestly, because it because it's not a hyper literal game, and that's a positive for a change because it is very comfortable being very like again it's a very painterly game it's very much a game that's like it's 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 a mood game you know what i mean it exists off the vibe of it you know more so than the literal moment to moment story which i'm okay with there's there's certainly even like with films there are certain films where i don't mind if a film is not terribly literal and kind of just going for a mood if that's clearly intentional, if that's clearly the point of it, and that's what it was going for in the first place, that's clearly what this is going for. Um, so, uh, I still love it so much. It's still such a fascinating game. The Office Dog, sorry, I just noticed this. Oh, look at all the dogs. So the one thing I miss from, uh, I used to work for a fashion company, and there was um, there was a little French bulldog that that one of my uh, co-workers would bring in because we were just like a little office. So that job otherwise was awful, um, largely due to the the pair of bosses I had who were absolutely dreadful to work with. Um, but the staff there was really nice. I really, it was a job that I stayed at because I really, the staff had a good camaraderie and it was just the supervision and the management that kind of fucked everything up. But I do miss going into work and being able to see uh, the little French bulldog. I forget the name, but uh, that was always a highlight to the day. <laughs> um, but anyway, that was so much fun. This was one. I'm really glad that I played this for uh, for October. It's uh, it's fitting. And who knows? Who knows when the third one's going to release? You know, maybe that'll be one that um, I have to play for next October, depending on when it comes out. So, but anyway, you know, let me know what you guys think of uh, the ending of it and all that. Uh, I think this was really fun. I mean, it looked gorgeous. It's such. It's just. It's the exact right length for a game too. I also like that this ending chapter feels more like an epilogue than it does a whole new chapter i think uh another team may have made the mistake of trying to bloat the final level with the idea of being like well if is it satisfying if, if we don't make it like an hour long it's like yeah it is like it's quality has nothing to do with length of a game you know there's so many amazing even like i think people forget like an original game like um like portal like a game from way back you know and that first portal is not a long game at all. You can blaze through it pretty fast, especially if the um, the puzzles kind of make sense to you. But that's good. That keeps the momentum going. And that's why that first portal is amazing. And then the second portal is significantly longer. But it, I feel like they expanded it in the right areas because they actually delved more into the story and layered it a little bit more. And that made it really effective. So they, you know, they had a good functional foundational reason for the length of the game, you know, so... Um, I think that's a tough thing in any artistic medium, you know, like that's the thing way when you'll hear like directors talk about making films and all that, how a good editor is also there, not just for the moment to moment editing of the shots together, but also to say, is this scene necessary? Does this affect the flow of it overall, the rhythm of it? Um, I just recently watched um, a video on YouTube that was the two editors of the show, The Bear, which if you haven't watched The Bear, the cooking show, like the, the you know, the fictional narrative about the chef who's going back to his family business in Chicago. The Bear is a fucking amazing show. Seasons one and two are fantastic, and it has fascinating editing. There's a lot of times where it is, like, at such an insane rhythm. There's such uh, an insane, um, just kind of almost percussive kind of sense to it in the way they cut scenes together that's so intense and tumultuous and then it'll shift into certain scenes that are these long takes where there's no cuts whatsoever so um, anyway talking about like good rhythm and good sense of editing if you haven't seen that go watch that and if you like storytelling and find it interesting go look up on youtube the interview it should be pretty easy to find looking up the interview with the editors of the bear it should pop up um because it was really fascinating to hear their insight into finding the right length for things and taking scenes that were entire slow scenes and cutting them down to sometimes a minute or two you know just because that rhythm ended up working better for the story so um but anyway this was this was really fun like i said thanks for being here um like i said i'm gonna try to mix in more of these shorter games not just spooky games but also um just in general smaller indie projects and all that just to vary things up a little bit it's also nice for me it's less daunting than when i pick a really lengthy game to play um so i try to choose those carefully because i know i don't always have as much time as i would like at the moment in life to record and, and do things that i want so i'm going to be picking you know one longer playthrough generally at a time and then 
dropping in smaller projects. And as always, again, feel free to recommend things to me, you know, if you have games that you really love, and especially smaller little indie projects, indie horror games, you know, anything like that, you know, that you think I should give a tr give give a chance and try out um feel free to let me know because i always appreciate that kind of feedback um and as i've said many times i still very much read each and every comment that's left for me so i not only listen to your feedback on things but i also love hearing your take on games and your recommendations for other things you think maybe will be interesting for me to try or you'd be interested to hear my perspective on because that really does make a difference you know i think there's an interesting balance being a content creator where it's like you make things for yourself kind of first and foremost but also it's, it's, a, it's a balance where you don't ever want to be someone who's just pandering to your audience or whatever they say moment to moment. Because I think the long term is that's actually a negative because you lose your voice. And that's what people are here for in the first place. If you're doing any creative work, people are here because they like your rendition. But then on the flip side, you try to kind of steer things in the direction you want as a creator and then get feedback from that. And then kind of it's, it's a weird collaborative thing of creating things, you know, and, and putting it out to an audience. So, um, which I really like, that's why it's been very encouraging and positive that I love that even when I've decided to pivot and try different genres in, um, audios that I've done, try different types of games, different stuff, just try to experiment with my channel more and not have it feel too sterile. Um, it's always been very well received. It's always been very encouraging to be able to have that happen and see the response from, from all of you being interested and still being just as engaged and chatty about things no matter what it is so um so thank you for that i've said it before but i really do appreciate it, especially as a smaller content creator at this stage where um i wouldn't still be doing this if it wasn't for your engagement your response your feedback and your enthusiasm quite frankly because it's it's at a point where like you know for future dom looking back um oh jesus sorry the music got so scary all of a sudden oh god <laughs> um, but, you know, if it wasn't, you know, for future Dom, you know, it's easy to think to have the incentive if you're making stuff and it makes a lot of money, you know, and it's then it's like you're kind of settled and you make it because, you know, it pays all the bills and all that. But I'm not at that stage. You know, I do this because I really love it. And, you know, it's getting to the point where it's nice because it's starting to pay some of the bills. You know, it's starting to be it's starting to offset things a little bit, you know, which is encouraging. But it's one of those things where I wouldn't be doing it and have been doing it for this long if there had not been the feedback from all of you and the encouragement and having people suggest different games and be here for all of the different kinds of creative work that I do. And it also encourages me to keep branching out and trying different things and not be afraid of that and not live um, so beholden to the algorithm, you know, because it's, it's a comforting thing. Because I'll look inside and look and go, okay, you know, whatever video or audio or something that I posted maybe didn't do as well as other ones. Maybe it's one of my lowest viewed ones. But the funny thing is it doesn't bother me in the slightest because... It just means that YouTube's not sending it out like crazy. But those videos still get comments from you, you know? that Like, the, the core community here, you're all still very present, even on my most popular and my least popular. You're still there chatting and conversing and, and having lots of interesting conversations back and forth. And that's so encouraging. So that way, it never feels like a flop. I, I never view it that way, as long as it's something that I'm proud of and I'm happy with. And then seeing all of you who are, have been here just you know get to enjoy it and connect to it that alone is so worth it and that really helps to balance it out and take pressure off where if every video i have is not the number one in my most recent videos in terms of views it doesn't bother me it really doesn't um it used to bug me more when i was first starting because i was so worried about that and now that i've been doing it a while it's very nice to just go that's okay you know what not everything needs to not everything is is made for the algorithm not everything is going to be recommended by YouTube, but that's okay because I'm not just making it for that. I'm not just making things to grow my channel. I'm also making things because I enjoy them and I know that there are plenty of people in this community already who will respond to them and be interested. Like I've been doing with the horror audios I've been doing. Those were not necessarily the most viewed work I've ever done, but it was some of the most fun I've had in a while as a creator. It was very invigorating to try something different creatively and branch out and still and see so many responses from all of you enjoying it and and being creeped out and having fun with it and and just to just enjoying the change of pace so um anyway i'm, I'm in uh, i know the last i feel like the last few videos have been very less less silly sarcastic and more sincere but that's just a stage i'm at where i'm very appreciative in the midst of you know while life can have its ups and downs and all that it's a very comforting thing to be able to say okay end of the day I have something that most people never get to experience, which is to be able to not only create things, but to be able to send it out 
to a community that is excited to be there and a community that's also very smart. It's something I very much appreciate is that I like, I really like, look through the comments and all of your feedback. I'm like, this is, it's really refreshing to have a comment section that is full of nuance that really is thoughtful and interesting. And you, you all share so many interesting points of view on whatever I'm making. And it's just, it's really reassuring. And it also has helped to incentivize me to realize that I never need to and know what I ever want to, to talk down to my audience in any, in any way, as far as the content I make and all that to realize it's like, no, I can make things that are more avant-garde, that are more strange or whatever, because all of you are plenty smart enough and and savvy enough to be able to hear different types of storytelling. And and even when I'm doing gaming videos to delve into deeper, more heavy subject matter, you know, and that's something that is, it's very refreshing when the internet can be such uh, not only just a short attention span, but can also be so much like everything is a soundbite. Everything is a reactionary, either hyper positive or hyper negative reaction. And that gets very tiring, I think, because everything's it's hyperbole all the time about everything. And that's not how humans really exist. That's not how we talk to one another in person. But the Internet can really bring that out in people to be very um, just reactive to things, very uh, argumentative just for the sake of reaction and response and you know, all that so it's very just to say it's very nice that's not the case in the in the community that has built around the work that i've been doing it's very refreshing that even and it's nice too because even like when you guys leave comments about games or things i've done that you just really don't dig or don't like or whatever they're still like they're they're good comments because they're not mean-spirited in the slightest they're thoughtful they're saying yeah this doesn't really work for me and here's why you know i don't think this story thread really was satisfying or whatever and that's good i like i love seeing good thoughtful criticism in the same way i love seeing just people just being excited about stuff and joking and having enthusiasm for whatever silly stuff we're doing you know so um anyway i i've i've said this in other videos but i really have just as of late i'm feeling particularly appreciative um because this has become such a central part of my life, much more than I expected it to be when I first started. So I really, I thought it would do, I thought it would do okay, but I really didn't think the community would be as interwoven at, as it has become so quickly over, you know, and I say quickly, it's been a couple of years, but it's still a really relatively short span of time in the scheme of things to be able to see all of this um, develop, you know? So uh, anyway, so thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I appreciate you a lot. Um, I hope what I do brightens your day a little bit. That's something that I always want because I know life's tough. And hopefully this stuff brings you a little bit of a reprieve. Hopefully my audios can sometimes bring you a little bit of comfort, bring you some laughs. Can They can just, just entertain you sometimes and just give you some fun, immersive storytelling, you know. And, uh, you know, because that's... Uh, that's that's what we go on. That's what we all subsist on is is art and storytelling. It's the stuff that keeps us going, you know, because it's like day to day life and working and paying the bills and all that. That's not living. That's existing, you know, and most of us get stuck in that because it's not easy, you know, and that's I find myself very much in that sense a lot of times where I'm just worried about my day to day existence and all that and not taking time to just sit and enjoy things and enjoy what other people are creating. So um, so anyway, just I know I'm rambling, but I'm in an appreciative mood and you're going to you're going to deal with it. All right. So thank you for being here for my creativity. I hope stuff that I do encourages you to make, to feel like you can pursue your own creativity as well, because that's something I always try to encourage with anyone who's ever interacted with me over the last couple of years. Anytime I see people say, man, I, I wish I could try this. But I'm just scared or whatever. I don't think it would be good or whatever. It's like, then, then just do it and be bad and keep doing it. And if you don't like it, if you're doing it and it's not great, but you're having fun, then keep doing it anyway. Then then if you're enjoying it, keep pursuing it until it gets better and it'll be worth it. And if not, then move on to something else. That's perfectly okay. But I think all of us would do a lot better if we tapped more into our childlike sense of enjoying things, much like with video games. For video games, it's a funny thing to be growing up now with the, the people around my age and younger, where video games are not viewed in any way as this children's thing, this thing you leave behind as you get to be an adult. You know, it's like, oh, you're still playing games, you know, like as an adult, it's like, yeah, it's such a great part of storytelling. And it does bring us back, I think, to a little bit of that childhood imagination that we all could use more of and we all could express more. I think most of us have artistic areas we, we want to express, but we get scared of doing them because we don't think they're viable anymore in adulthood or we don't think they're quote unquote reasonable and the reality is they're more reasonable than anything else they're the thing that makes that last longer than we do you know what i mean no one remembers the reports you filed after you're gone but if you were even even if you didn't make a huge impact on the world but you wrote a song you wrote poems you painted a picture you made you you made stories or whatever those things will outlive you and will be something that will be cherished by those 
down the road past your own lifespan. So I think that's why it's I that's I think that's why I get so passionate about this, and I try to really push people, encourage people to say, don't wait to think creativity is something down the road for you if you want to do it now, because now is the best time to do it, good or bad. You'll never have a better time to start doing it, and you'll never feel satisfied by waiting longer and longer and longer to do something creative, you know? So no matter how big or small it is. So um, anyway, there's my little life spiel. I drop these in every now and then. That's really all this is. My gaming videos are actually just, I'm luring you all in to then try to just like bully you into having a better life and just, you know, just sit there and be like, listen here, you little shit, all right? You're going to encourage yourself and you're going to be kind to yourself or else, all right? <laughs> So thanks for uh, being here as I lure you in while I try to give life messages. And anyway, I'll be doing uh, more videos soon, all right? Thanks for joining me for this, especially this October, all right? If you're watching this right as it comes out, then have a wonderful, happy Halloween. And I will see you around next time, all right? So thank you all so much for watching and listening. My name is Dominic, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.